So for this week's video, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. I've been learning a lot of new things recently and kind of wanted to show some of what I've been doing. Um, I've also bought a lot of new gear over the last few weeks, so I kind of wanted to go over some of that. Um, everything down to the new picks that I'm using, um, the new amp setup that I've got and how I'm recording differently. So I must admit, I found doing these vlogs very hard at the moment. Without gigging, without practicing, without meeting up with the band, without going and doing stuff on my own, I'm finding the content each week harder and harder. Now, this is why I've dropped down to doing it once every fortnight, and hopefully you guys are still enjoying it. So if you've got anything that you'd like to see or you want me to do, please let me know. I had lots of ideas before lockdown and I'm struggling. So let's talk a little bit about what I've been up to. In all honesty, not that much. I've been practicing going over the stuff that myself and Patrick went through from a couple of weeks ago. And we're hoping in the not so distant future to have a socially distanced lesson in person because it's a little bit easier than using Skype. I planned to use a lot of the clips from the videos of Skype to, uh, to put in the vlog, but the connection was awful. We couldn't do too much with it. So what have I learned from all of this? New gear was needed, but also a new mindset. I had to get out of old habits. I had to get into remembering what I was like when I was 13, 14 and trying to play again. So some of the biggest pieces of advice that I got out of that lesson was around the way I was playing, the way I was thinking about the fretboard. So this vlog's going to be a little bit about that and a little bit about the gear side. So for me, I had to rethink things. I had to relearn patterns and I've had to try and learn some stuff that I've never done before. The pentatonic patterns were something completely new. And the end of this vlog, I'll show you a sort of updated jam video from the one that I did a couple of weeks ago. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with the full six plus minutes, but I thought I'd try and put a bit in to show you how I'm getting on. One of the biggest changes that I found is these. Now, these picks were suggested to me. Um, they are, I'm going to murder the guy's name, um, but it's the guitarist from uh, Dream Theater. It's his guitar, it's his um, signature picks. Um, and these are a lot smaller than the ones that I was using. Um, and I was also using metal tipped picks. These are completely plastic, but they're about a 1.4, 1.5 mil. Um, but the size of them is, is, is amazing. I mean, yeah, I'm a left-handed player. They roughly fit perfectly between the size, between my finger and thumb. And you can see they, they barely have any, any movement on the end. This has allowed me to play a lot quicker, a lot more accurately. Um, and I've just generally really enjoyed having the extra control. So thanks to Patrick for these suggestions. These were brilliant. Um, I'll try and put an Amazon link in the description below. Not affiliated, just if anybody's interested in, in what I've got and, and the ones I've picked up. I think I got a pack of six for about £7 or something. That was, yeah, it was really well priced. Um, and if anybody is struggling, I would like massively recommend these. I've been stuck using the same picks for years. Wasn't going to change. And, and yeah, I'd, I'd massively recommend these now. So gear-wise, you guys know I've picked up my PRS in the last few weeks. Must admit, I've barely put it down. Um, it's been a phenomenal guitar for me. Um, I actually picked the Gretsch up and the Les Paul up the other day, just to remind myself I do have a set of quality guitars. But I've also been and um, bought a new amp. Um, by amp, what I really mean is I've bought a new cab. Um, so the Micro Terra that I've got, you can get a 1x8 cab to go with it. And at the time, I didn't need it, didn't think I needed it. Um, I've still got my 1x12 Hughes and Kettner, and that will be used for uh, practicing with the band and obviously for gigs. But I wanted something that I could use here in the house that wasn't too loud, um, but would actually show me what the tones from my pedal board was actually giving me. Now, the pedal board's been a big change. Um, I was going down the route of doing everything digital. So I had Amplitube on my iPad, I bought a MIDI controller board. For those of you that have been following me on social media, you'll have seen my pedal board change. And I was very like, I'm going to use this, and, and it's my Helix rip-off cheap version. Um, and what I actually found was that when I started to gig with it or started to try and practice with it, it's completely doable. Um, it would 100% work for somebody, but for me it wasn't working, I wasn't feeling it. Um and I spoke to a friend of mine, he's like, you've got to go back to the pedals, you know, you'll really love having the pedals again. I was like, ah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, obviously, part of, with the wheelchair, I don't want to carry too much gear, so I want to keep things reasonably simple, reasonably concise. 
So I had the mini pedal board, which you guys have seen. Um, that's a Donner pedal board. And uh, I'd filled most of it with the looper. And obviously the majority of my gigs are me solo acoustic, so that's great. But working with Cooper's lipstick and, and obviously anything else that I do going forward, I kind of felt that I needed to expand my electrics. Um, I've made the effort to buy the guitars. I'm, I might as well now expand the pedal boards. So after the practice with Patrick the other week, we were talking about compressor pedals. And I was, don't need a compressor, don't, yeah, never needed one. Anyway, he, he played me a few bits using his compressor and, and quite quickly I realised, hmm, probably could do with one. So he lent me his uh, his Boss uh, compressor pedal, um, the, the CS3, compressor sustainer. I put this on my pedal board and within five minutes was like, I need a compressor on my board. So why is this one not on my board? Why have I not bought this from Patrick? It's too big. It's a great pedal. It's amazing. It was perfect. But for me, physical size-wise, it's a little bit big. So I immediately got onto my favorite site, got onto Amazon, uh, had a quick look around, and I found that Mower, who I adore their pedals, uh, they do a yellow comp compressor pedal. So I ordered that and that arrived. So part of this video and the, and the next part of the video is going to kind of be me going through my um, practice and now recording setup and then the pedal board and the kind of sounds that I'm now getting out of the pedal board. Now you think, Paul, you've done this before. We've seen all this in the, in the older videos. Yeah, uh, understood. But the big change now is that I'm using my amp head live. So part of what I was doing before was em everything was emulated through Amplitude. So I was running my pedal into the iRig and then into Amplitude. And inside there, I was using the tiny Terra head um, and then the, the, the orange cab behind that. What I've now found with the setup and the way I've got the, the, the room here now is that I can now use my micro Terra head live um, and actually run my pedal board into that and I'm using the headphone socket from the micro Terra, outputting that into Amplitude, turning off the head inside Amplitude and then just using the emulator cab and that's giving me such a different sound already and I actually think that's giving me a truer sound to what the pedal board's doing. So Paul, if you can do that, why did you buy the 1x8 cab? There's nothing like having a proper amp. Um, it's I'm going to be honest, it's not the best sounding cab in the world. I'm glad people said to me, make sure you get a better cab for when you're gigging and that's why I went and got the Hughes and Kettner. But I've been impressed with it for practicing and it's given me a true sound. Um, so the clips that are coming up um, the clean sound isn't very clean. Um, and I actually think that was more the gain level on the um, audio interface than it was the sound coming out of my amp. Because actually, with the right cab underneath it and the right settings, I can get the micro terra head to give me a really nice clean sound. And the reason I want to run a clean sound is because I want the pedal board to take the bulk of the work. So... For those of you that are interested, please carry on and watch now and you'll hear a bit more about the setup that I've got, the amps that I've got. Um, you'll see me using the new pick um, and you'll also see the way I've got everything set up and the pedals and how they sound. Um, if you're interested, skip nearer the end of the video. I've done three or f probably three-ish minutes of uh, a jam track, um, which is uh, all the links now. So that will be below. Um, that's an amazing jam track. Same one that I used from a couple of weeks ago. But hopefully now you'll start to see that I'm moving across the fretboard a bit easier. Still a little bit too busy for me at the moment. I've not settled down enough to get the flow right. But I'm enjoying finding different notes on the fretboard and finding my way across it. Um, and that's something I, I can't thank Patrick enough for, was just opening that up to me. Um, I'm still learning my arpeggios. That's completely new to me. Um, but we will get there. Um, so yeah, other gear that I use that I've been using for a long time that I probably never talk about my in-ear monitors. Um, I've customized these. So these are my, uh, little in-ears. Uh, they've got a GOW, um, faceplate on them. I've just actually had to order a new set of faceplates and in turn a new set of in-ear monitors, um, because I couldn't get the other ones off. So I just ordered myself another set. Uh, I'll link these below. These are the Mi Audio M6 Pro 2s. 
um, they're a single driver, but for me, the gigging I do on my own, and actually I've used them vaguely with the band, um, I think they're great. Um, and for 30 or 40 pound UK, uh, they're brilliant. So that's enough of me babbling because we all know I can babble on. I'll let you guys enjoy. And if you want to see more or you've got more ideas, um, please let me know. If you like what you're seeing, please like the video, subscribe for more and uh, drop me a comment because I'd love to know what you think. So this is my new setup for practicing and recording. I've got my orange Micro Terra head. Underneath it is the 1x8 cab, which I use when I want to practice live. But most of the time what I do is I run this into Amplitube. I've turned off the Tiny Terra head, so I'm just using the cab simulation. I run the guitar into the pedal board, into the Micro Terra head, goes into the iRig and then into my audio interface. And this allows me to practice and record silently. So let's have a look at the pedal board. On the right hand side I've got the looper, that's completely standalone now for all my acoustic gigs. And for my electric gigs I'm going into the Moa Baby Tuner, the Moa Yellow Comp Compressor, the Moa Blues Crab Overdrive, the Moa Cruncher Distortion, into the TC Electronics Spark Mini, and then over to the Donna Rev Echo which is a reverb and delay pedal combined. And all of that's being powered by the, uh, the power core brick that you can see at the top. I did have the looper at the start of the chain but found it caused a lot of noise throughout. Thank <laughs> you. 